Seth, thank you for coming. Yeah, my pleasure, man. You did an awesome job. You just got off the stage here behind us. Um, and you presented on so many things, content creation, um, things that mortgage lenders need to be doing. I'm not in the mortgage business. Okay. I'm in an industry that uh, is not doing much content creation yet. Commercial real estate. Yep. And I'm really starting to lead it by creating video content on yeah. Snapchat. Okay. And I've done it now for about two years. Yeah. I've started repurposing mm -hmm. my Snapchat stories distributing them on YouTube. Okay. I've started tweeting, that's where the commercial real estate industry is, on yeah. Twitter, yeah. Um, and, and I've started to have conversations there with them. Um, I've started to help my team. I'm a partner in a real estate firm in Rochester, Minnesota, of 10 people, Okay. five of them are young professionals. I'm starting to, like you talked about, get the team to recognize what I'm doing yeah. so that they start doing it and we just hold our spot as being the leader in our industry, in our market. But ultimately, I recognize that if we start to act like a media company, mm -hmm. we can go to other markets Easily. and we can start building relationships digitally yeah. that will lead to business. Yeah. Where I'm stuck personally right now, and you've seen a lot of these individuals, it's a one-man team creating content. It is. I'm trying to figure out on a shoestring budget where my next moves should be that are going to really take me to the next level of being a voice in the CRE industry yeah. to get additional speaking opportunities. This is my first speaking opportunity in front of 100 people at this deal. That's great. Uh, to get opportunities to meet other brokers, yep. to learn from them, to get the opportunity to really be a leader for my team so they start doing it even more. Yeah. And my thoughts are I either need to build, I don't have a website, yeah. I either need to build a website and focus on getting all my content to that website, yes. or I need to focus on video, that's the thing I'm most passionate about, and build a media team behind my video. Okay. Obviously. Why or? What, yeah, obviously why not do both? I would say in the shortest amount of time okay. with my with my strengths and my capabilities. Okay. I don't know how to build a website. I know of things like WordPress, but I just, I don't take the time. I'll do this all day long. So tell me, um, do you need to have commercial listings on the website? I would prefer to push it to our company's website. Okay. So if you don't need commercial real estate specific, just go to Squarespace. Okay. And just spin up the site. So the reason that the site is so important is it is a destination that you own and control. So think of it as a physical asset. It's if you build reputation as an in inbound links viewers to that destination, then every piece of content becomes a conduit or a spoke Got for it. that destination. The goal of all of that there's a lot of goals, but one of the objectives in that is you want to get people on your mailing list. So you have permission to continue because getting random eye views on any of these videos is great, but you don't get the opportunity to communicate with them again unless they volunteer to come back. But if you can drive them to your site, give them something of value and offer, you know, some insight into how to do what they do better and get their email, then you have a reason to communicate with them. Then you have a tribe, you have a list and you can amplify that to convert to do anything. Got it. Um, so another thing that I would say is, if you want to amplify more, think about influencer marketing. So an example of, hey, in your market, are there commercial agents and brokers that are not going out of the market? Do they have some insight that other people would be interested in? Wouldn't it be interesting if you interviewed them, ask them questions, and then share that with the world, and had to go back to your site. Now all of a sudden the top CREs in your space, yep. people are coming to your site for an expert on them and their expertise. You become the center right. of the conversation. And that's I think what I want to do. Now let me explain this business plan related to that and see if it makes sense to you. Okay. You know Gary Vaynerchuk? Of course. He does not throw right hooks often. Yeah. He tries to sell his book. He just threw out, he wants uh, people to come to VanderMedia for $10,000. He got 30 people to sign up for a one-day event. Yep. But other than that, he's spitting out free stuff Not all stuff. the time. Yeah. I want to be similar to that, and here is why. 
because ultimately while I'm playing, I would like to develop properties. Yeah. Don't know how yet. Okay. Getting little dabs here and there, talking develop to people. Develop physical properties? Physical okay. assets. Got it. In order to get opportunities, brokers or individuals that have the ownership of the property or see the vision for it need to yeah. bring it to somebody. Yeah. If I become the voice online that helps people market in new ways, yeah. these brokers that are not doing this type of stuff, you're, an, you're a valued asset at that point. I'm a valued asset at that point, and my hope is they will then come to me when an opportunity may come up in their market and say, Bucky's development team, yeah. when I'm at that level, may be one to pitch this to. So that's kind of a long-term vision. What do you think about that versus trying to monetize yeah. being an influencer? So it makes complete sense. Um, I always think about these activities from the overall business strategy. Um, I do think front-loading value, regardless of the ultimate goal, is super important today in today's market just because people are distracted. Um, but I do think it's really important to do some activities that are ROI-driven, and you have to determine what those are. So an example might be is, hey, let's say you're going to go down that path that you described. You want to participate in development. And wouldn't it be interesting to find out who are the top 20 developers that that might be in your space and interview them? and connect with them and start building a relationship with them. So it's not like they have to discover you. You proactively determined who they might be. And by the course of interviewing them and showcasing them, they get to see your work. So you take a little more proactive role instead of jab, 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 jab randomly, yeah. hoping that they're going to see it. This is very strategic. Got it. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Awesome. Yeah, and I'm doing all this to, it's, I like this, but I want to build a business. Yeah, yeah. And I'm building a brokerage, and I want to build a development company, but I know in combining it with this, these two things will only happen yeah. quicker. So one of the things to think about, every uh, business has a funnel. And so the funnel has different influencers within that funnel. And the funnel goes something like this, very top of the market, meaning people may or may not know they want to buy with you, so these are videos that don't have to do with what you have to buy and sell. Lower down in the market, you've established what the, maybe what the pain is, and people have raised their hand in some way. I need digital help. I need help in promoting this new development, whatever that is. Really down in the funnel, they are making decisions on who to work with. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about your content marketing strategy is, you determine, well, who am I approaching with my content marketing? When I create this content, am I getting anybody in this low bucket and the middle bucket and the high bucket? Because mm -hmm. then you can, you can literally turn the dials and go, you know what, I do really good at top of the funnel. I knock it out of the park, but I'm not talking to people that are actually making decisions. Let's shift our activities to just focus on providing value to them with content. What Got would that it. look like? Got it. And then you can, because you can always do that. Like every quarter you go, okay, we're doing lots of these marketing activities. Who's it focused on? And is that helping to drive my business goal? Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, you're now an arm of the sales effort as well. Because sales and marketing should be like this. Not right. marketing's over here and sales is just trying to close. Marketing is enabling sales to happen. Right. And that's ideally what it should be. What's interesting in commercial real estate and also like commercial property management in general. They, sales and marketing has been like this, yeah. but it's been one hat. Yeah, yeah, of course. And now I recognize marketing and sales need to be two entirely different things. Like we just listed a boutique hotel. Yeah. That could be an awesome property to do a content marketing plan yeah. on as a commercial real estate. No one's doing content marketing plans on individual yeah. listings yeah. because what happens is the real estate agent is expected to know how to market the property. Yeah. The old school marketing ways were a real estate sign, kind of old school, putting it on the website, yeah. things like that. Yeah. But, um, yes, I see what you're saying is then bringing those back together. Yeah, not, no. not viewing them just like this because that's what I've been saying, but then recognizing, okay, how do we need to bring them back together? Yeah. And, that, and the, the shortcut to figuring that out is if you are not a sales arm, is understanding what their goals are, like really what their goals are. And they may say baseline, hey, I want to sell more units. Um, but it also may be that they want to get more people into their database to sell other units. Mm -hmm. So then you can determine your activities and deliver on pieces of them. So you both determine together what success is. Because it's so critical when you have a partner Mm -hmm. that you know what they say success is, so when it's over, you go, you get what you want. Right. 
Because if you don't align early on, you're like, well, yeah, that looked great, but it didn't do anything for my business. Right, and if I'm going to help my advisors within my team win, I yeah. need to make sure every year, yeah, every week, every everybody day, knows what, what we're in for. They're getting what they want. Awesome. Thanks for sitting down. Yeah, my pleasure. Moment. My pleasure. I really appreciate your speech. Awesome. Yeah, my love. My pleasure.